Hello and welcome to Kismetrizing. So I want to apologize that I couldn't get across a weekly oracle card uh, guidance reading last week. I meant to do it during the course of this week, but it wasn't possible. I just been overrun with things to do. Uh, but I want to reach out to you today and talk to you about the energy at this moment because it's been so poignant in its own way. And uh, largely because there is a huge full moon in Taurus today. And what does that mean in terms of all the un other energy that surrounds it? And how does it, how does it come up for us? And so I'm talking here about the general themes. And uh, this is not an astrological forecast. So I'm talking about how this energy, as we experience it, impacts every one of us. And what are the greater themes that touches us at this moment? So the one thing I want to say is that this full moon today, it ushers in a kind of um, feeling of something new that's coming in. It's almost like a time of spring cleaning. It's almost like a time where the past can be left in the past and we can forge ahead. And for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, you're wondering, why am I saying this? We're going in, we are in autumn um, and we are in fall and we are heading into winter. How can it be a spring clean energy? But it's very much like that. It's very much like the, the first half of this year has been about a, you know, a wintry time, a time to go inward, a time to settle inward. And now it's a time to open up and it's almost to clean up and to forge a new path to bring in a new energy. And the way in which this energy works with us right now is it asks us to dream into being a new way. It asks us to be very specific about what it is that we desire and not to be afraid to dream, but to really go forth and ask for what you need. And I think that this is a time where, you know, it's, um, if you're just settling down and you, you're daydreaming about something that you desire, or if you're thinking about how things could potentially be, not thinking about the barriers that stand in your way, not thinking about all the, the, the restrictions that are out there, but rather just thinking about how you'd like to be, how you'd like to spend your days, how you foresee yourself in, in two years, in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years. This is a really important time to think about those things because what it's gonna do, it's, it's gonna almost like stamp into being in your pathway and resonate through your, your journey, a certain direction that you're taking. So what do I mean by that? It's, it's almost like if you decide, if you have a snapshot of what your future looks like or how you'd like your future to look like, even if you haven't actioned any steps towards that, even if logistically it doesn't seem possible, what's gonna be, what is gonna happen right now is that it, the snapshot is almost going to frame your journey as you go ahead. And this is an extraordinarily wonderful time in terms of being able to manifest that. And the last couple of months have brought us to that. So this last couple of months have been really an important time in terms of being able to bring prosperity in our lives. And some of you may look at, at this and say, well, you know, you said that in August we'd have prosperity and you said that in September we'd have prosperity. And here we are in October, at the end of October, and I still don't have prosperity. But the way in which I'd urge you to look at it is basically to say, well, what has come up for me in August and September that I still need to work with, that I still need to discard in my life in order to be able to move forth? And some of you may have found that August and September, uh, even now October, has been a very trying time for you. And uh, it would have been a, a situation where you might have had ill health, you might have lost a job, you might have had financial difficulties, you might be, uh, you know, looking the dragon in the eye, so to say, you might be really coming face to face with the trials that you have right now. And how have you been dealing with it? Or what has come out of that? So this is to say that this energy that we're experiencing right now, it has brought up whatever it is that we needed to deal with. If we needed to remove something from our life, then this energy has come up to help us with that in order to be able to make the space for something new to come in. And this is why this full moon today and this energy that we're in right now is actually uh, at the pinnacle of that. It's like, it's to say, okay, we've highlighted all the issues that you needed to deal with in the last three to four months. And now as we go forth, uh, we should have dealt with that, or at least even if we haven't resolved all of these issues, what we would have is a pretty good understanding 
of where we stand with regard to those issues, whether, as I said, whether it would be with your health, your career, your finances, uh, with the family matters in some of your situations, uh, with regard to uh, challenges that would have come up, just general challenges. And some of these challenge, challenges you might have faced earlier on in your life, at another stage in your life, where you would have been working with the, uh, these themes, you know, across in 2016, in 2015, in 2017, you would have been working with some of these things as well in some way or the other. There would have been um, kind, some kind of similar themes running for uh, running through. But what's happened here is that whatever difficulties that you've experienced at the beginning of, at the end of July, the beginning of August, is now, or whatever you've had to face at that time, say in the month of July, in the month of August, something that you've had to face, that you hadn't had to face before, this is something that is now gonna resolve itself. It's something that we're gonna be able to release, and with it comes blessings. And uh, if we've learned the lessons, if we've been honest with ourselves as to what this energy is speaking about and what it is that we need to learn right now, then we're going to be able to take with us this these lessons and go forth and be able to forge a better uh, a better life for us and a better way forward. Now I've mentioned this other time frame, something around 2015, 2016, 2017, that might have some relevance to what we've experienced in July, August, September, and now in October. And for those of you who are resonant with that, I want you to look at what it is that has somehow been manifested and that has begun back then. How is it manifested in your life right now? So it might have been a decision that you took. It might have been something that you've manifested in your life, will, perhaps unwillingly, or not, not actually intentionally, but something that you, you manifest in your life by a particular decision that you took in, in these years. And that ultimately, that has some link to what you've been experiencing now in August, uh, September and October, and how you've been feeling. And for those of you, once again, who are resonant with this particular point, I want you to look at how it is that you would have created this in your life. How is it that you invited this into your life inadvertently, but you still have invited this into your life? And what role it served in your life? And why did you perhaps invite this into your life? How did you uh, bring this into your life without even realizing it? And what is the consequence of it? What is the result of it? And how does that continue to impact you as you go along? So another theme that's come up here is that this is a really important time as we go ahead in this last weeks and as we go ahead in the next weeks to understand how we have behaved in our relationships in our love relationships. So what has the, what has been the role that we've played and what has been the role that our partners have played and how has that actually uh, modeled us? How have we been modeled by that? And look at your progression, look at your growth from perhaps your first relationship to the relationship that you are in now and who you or at the beginning of your this relationship that you're in to how you are now and understand what role you've been playing understand who you've been in this relationship and understand what is your worth as you understand it in your previous relationship or as versus the relationship that you're in right now and so i think what i'm trying to say here is that this theme here is very much about how we position ourselves in relationships and what is our role that we play and how is that linked to our self-worth or how we value ourselves or what do we think is the role that is expected of us and how it manifests and ultimately what is the consequence of that what is the result of that how do we uh or how do we come out the other end or who are we as a result of having behaved in that manner or played that role within a particular relationship now, for some of us, this, these are relationships that would have ended a long, long time ago. And why is it coming up now? Well, it's simply just to say, look at who we are now versus who we were then. Look at the roles that we played then and how do they impact us? How do they impact us as people? How do they ultimately define us? And would you be willing 
to accept that role in a relationship today? Would you be willing to accept uh, that position in your life today? And how do you value yourself at this moment versus how you valued yourself back then? So I think ultimately what it's trying to say to us is like, look how far we've come and look how much we've learned along this way. And it's almost like saying, well, give yourself a tap on the back, but don't forget where you've come from in this sense. Don't forget the position that you've been in. Don't think that because everything is okay right now, if it is, that is, that, you know, we simply forget what has happened in the past. Because if you've been in some kind of victim role in the past, or if you've been somebody that's played a role simply to... Uh, to be to please another or to be accepted then this is something that you need to acknowledge about yourself and understand yourself within that context and understand why you've done that in the first place and is there something to be healed about that is there some kind of healing that needs to take place to to basically bring that to peace with yourself and that's something that you can take a look at in your personal life and decide whether it's something that you need to perhaps do ritual about you need to do a meditation about or you perhaps need to just simply sit and think about it or journal about it and and ask or maybe even talk to some of those people from your past and and actually ask yourself well was it okay then is it okay now do i have to say anything to these people is there something that needs to be healed in myself okay so that is the the second th theme i think the first one has been that there's been this kind of um, situation between August or end of July August till now that is now coming to an end and there's a way forward that we can go and leave this devastation behind us that's one thing the second theme is looking back at these relationships from the yesteryear and look and evaluating ourselves within that context and uh, for some of you who are teenagers who are looking at this and you just you're just in your first relationship uh, you know, you might be wondering, what am I talking about here? And how is this relevant to you? Well, I would say, just look at yourself and the role you're playing in this relationship and ask yourself if you value yourself in this role and if you are valued in this role. All right, so moving on to the third theme and what is impacting us right now? What is important for us right now? So this is a bit of a tricky one to talk about because politically, it's quite relevant right now. But from an energetic point of view it's coming up in a different way and it's the it's a matter of understanding femininity and masculinity and how, what what does that mean what does too much of femininity mean and what does too much of masculinity mean and where is a good balance and where can we honor the feminine without desecrating the feminine and where can we honor the masculine without desecrating the masculine so it's about being able to bring into account balance but with balance uh being able to be harmonious as well as loving and uh being accommodating in that context so themes that face us right now and you might have had these discussions recently with your friends or with or might have been something that you've come that's come up for you and if not then don't worry about it uh but one of the themes that are right now relevant is that theme of femininity and how do we express femininity and how do we express the feminine power how is it that the this feminine power can be expressed without it being destructive and without it being something that's uh, wiping clean a slate but being able to take into account that of the past and that history and being able to be in balance with that and being able to be at peace with that and how does this play out for every one of us so I think the way in which it impacts us in our daily lives is being able to recognize uh, balance as far as the feminine is concerned and the masculine is concerned and not just push forth the feminine because perhaps there's there's some kind of affirmative action to redress uh, the, uh, the, pro the problems of the past but rather to be able to understand what is really going on here not to rush forth and push forth a particular agenda because it looks as if it's what's right but rather to feel your way through it and understand where is it good to have the feminine power and where is it good to have the masculine power and how is it that we need both and how is it that they both need to work in harmony in order for us to be able to move forth right now and so this is a theme that I think needs a lot of discussion and um, the way in which I'm speaking about it right now might seem as if I'm prejudiced in this 
in in either in a particular way but i'm not really i'm just um my personal views are not coming into account here i'm simply channeling to you what is uh, shown to me or what is given to me as far as this energy is concerned so please don't bash me as far as this is concerned so um, I do think however it is a rather important subject and it's something that we need to to look at and we need to really feel within ourselves so it's not it doesn't take into account so much of intellectual power you know I'm not thinking so much about whether it's right logically or whether it's you know and not uh, depending so much lo on logical um, on what is logical and what's not logical on intellectual power and rationalism but rather to be able to feel and to be led by what's what feels right does it feel right to completely squash a masculine power because the mas masculine power has been abused in the past or is it something that we can accommodate and is there something healing that needs to be done as far as the masculine energy is concerned as well and how is it that we can bring this all together and integrate it and work with it so those are some of the themes that this full moon in Taurus brings up in the context of the energy that we're in. So the energy that we're in, it's almost like a bracket, you know, and the, the full moon in Taurus is just a kind of a tent pole. It's, but it's really, I'm talking about the bracket here that uh, from, from mid-July till, and what's going to take us into uh, January next year. So this is the energy and we are actually at a really important point where we can say, okay, well, we've drudged up all of the past and now we can let it be and now we can move forth and how is it that we move forth and i think this um, moving forth is 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 really an important part of a new beginning for us and in previous readings you know um last year as well as earlier this year i've spoken very much about how uh, we haven't really begun the new year as yet we haven't really uh begun the new decade and energetically speaking, we are right now in the new decade. We really are there. And whatever else has happened this year has is belongs, yes, it belongs to, to 2020, but it also it doesn't belong to the decade. Yeah. If we have set the 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 ballpark for what we need to work with in this next decade and we are now in it so it's like I, w I don't want to say that this has been the new beginning for it but I want to say that we are firmly in it right now and we need to take that into account as we go ahead and we need to also be thinking about where we see ourselves and how we see ourselves and how we see ourselves in terms of this energy and I I'm not just talking about material things you know like where do you see yourself in 20 years from now you know in terms of the house the car whatever the degrees whatever it is that you have as your your personal goals but I'm talking here about the energy. Where do you see yourself in 20 years from now in terms of your sincerity, in terms of your authenticity, in terms of your compassion, in terms of your empathy, in terms of how you live in this world and how you're part of this world, and in terms of how you're giving back to this world, all right? So that is, that is more or less uh, the themes that I think are important right now that I like to speak about. Of course, there are other um, smaller things things that have been maybe you've had an unsettled energy maybe you've had a nudging uh this week uh perhaps you've been unwell during this week and there's been something that needed to be worked through as a result or perhaps there have been great breakthroughs during this time and uh, i think if there have been breakthroughs it's been because you've made the breakthroughs it's been because you've made it happen and i think that's also important right now as we go ahead to make sure that you are making the difference in your life so go ahead and take that action that you need to take however as far as daydreaming your your perfect life into being you might find that right now is not exactly the right time to take action but it's simply in an incubation process so just wait a bit and take the action when you feel it's right uh, you don't have to rush into anything right now it's important to research everything and to understand exactly where you're catapulting yourself to as you go ahead all right so with that i want to wish you all a lovely november as uh, it comes through for us may you be able to surf this energy as we go ahead i haven't talked very much about the energy of november i think i'll probably talk about it as we come ahead i talk generally about this energy as we uh, as we are uh, experiencing it but not on a day-to-day nitty-gritty uh, basis and uh, I think it will be uh, a profitable month I think it will be a month in which we are um, not as productive as we expect to be but uh, it will move us 
ahead even though there may be moments in which we feel that we are not being moved ahead and uh, but don't worry about that we are moving ahead and it will be okay I think December will be a better month for us all and um, I think uh, we have a lot to look forward to as we go ahead so with that all I want to wish you all a lovely November and wishing you many many blessings great health and be safe to all of you hang in there it might get a bit hairy in the next month but uh, it's not something that you need to be worried about on an individual uh, basis okay so I wish you all um, many blessings and once again blessings abound for Kismet Rising <laughs>